Hey my glam girls, welcome back to my channel, it's Chelsea, and today we are going to be comparing powder foundations. So we're comparing the Makeup Forever Matte Powder Foundation to the new Fenty Beauty Pro Filter Soft Matte Powder Foundation. Some of you all have requested this video just in terms of when I uploaded my video on the Fenty Beauty Powder Foundation, and I will link that for you if you would like to go back and watch that. Some of you all asked like, hey, how does it compare to the Makeup Forever one? How do you like it in comparison to the two? So I figured I'd just do a video because then we could get all those questions answered, and then you can make a decision as to what might be the better powder foundation for you. So I'm going to be putting both of these on my face. We'll obviously talk about the details of both foundations, and then and I will be wearing both of these foundations for a minimum of eight hours so that we can see how they wear and share with you my thoughts at the end of the day. So stay tuned for all of that. But before we get into this video, I just wanna say thank you so much for taking time out of your day to spend some time with me. If this is your first time here, I'd love for you to stick around and subscribe to my channel and join the Glam Girl Squad. And if you are a returning subscriber, well, thank you so much for deciding to come back and support my channel with all of your likes and your comments. They truly do mean a lot to me. So let's get into this video. The day is very laid back and comfortable. Y'all, my shirt and my bottoms together, $22. Cannot beat it. So starting with the shirt, I actually have already shown this particular sweatshirt to you all. I got it from Walmart. It is from the Time and True brand. It is $11. And I have it in this olive green color, and I got that one in a large, and it was very oversized. So I went back and got it in, I still have the olive green one, but I purchased this one in this gray color. This is a medium. I like the fit of this one a lot better because it's not so oversized, but it's still oversized. It's so comfy. Like the lining on the inside of the sweater is just so cozy and comfy. Love the cowl neck. It's not too tight around the neck or anything like that. And then my leggings are from Walmart as well. These are not maternity leggings, um, but I like how they do fit over my belly quite nicely. They come up, they're pretty high waisted. So even if you're not pregnant, they will come a little higher on your waist which I do like anyway for any of my bottoms. Um, and the leggings were a two pack for $11. So I have a black pair like this, and then this is the gray pair. Very comfy, stretchy, um, not see-through or anything like that. So thoroughly enjoying this outfit. I do already have concealer on. I put concealer under my eyes, um, a little concealer here, down the bridge of my nose, and then right along here. And I did lightly set the concealer with the Pat McGrath Under Eye Blurring Powder in Medium. The concealer I'm wearing is the Marc Jacobs Accomplice Concealer in the shade 39. Before applying the concealer, I did prime my T-zone with the Gucci Primer. Um, once again, just to make sure everything was settled and my and my face was prepared for the powder foundation. So, like I mentioned earlier in my video, I have already done a full review of the Fenty Beauty Powder Foundation. Um, so, I will go ahead and, and link that for you so that you can go and watch it to get a fuller review. This one is going to be kind of condensed since I've already done a review of that one. Um, but in that video, I was wearing shade 350 because I mistakenly picked up shade 350. Since then, I have gone back and gotten shade 330. So that's what I'm gonna be putting on this side of my face. And then we have the Makeup Forever. This is the Matte Velvet Skin Foundation. And I do have this one in the shade Y415. So let's talk about some quick details of the products. So here we have an inside look at the Makeup Forever Powder Foundation. And it does come with a sponge applicator. And I remember when this foundation came out, you could use either side of the sponge for different types of coverage application. Um, it also does come with a really nice size mirror as well. With the Fenty Beauty powder foundation, this is what the shade 330 looks like. This particular foundation compact does come with a mirror as well, as well as a sponge applicator. And then we get a magnified mirror on this side of the compact as well. With the Fenty Beauty powder foundation, we have 50 shades. And with the Makeup Forever powder foundation, we get 30 shades. With the Fenty Beauty powder foundation, we get a total of 0.32 ounces of product or 9.1 grams of product. And with the Makeup Forever powder foundation, we get a total of 0.38 ounces or 11 grams of product. So we do get a little bit more product in the Makeup Forever product versus the Fenty Beauty product. The, the Fenty Beauty Powder Foundation does retail for $36. Makeup Forever does retail for $38. So a little less product, a little less 
cost, a little more product, a little more cost. Both of these foundations do claim to provide you full coverage and they both do claim to be buildable. Both of these powders do claim to have a blurring effect onto the skin. They both claim to be long wearing. Both of these powder foundations are suitable for all skin types, dry, normal, combination, and oily. And then they're both are claiming to reduce your pores and provide a smooth matte finish on the face. The major differences that I noticed between the two products in terms of um, how they are marketed, the Fenty Beauty one is going to be vegan, cruelty-free, and gluten-free. I do not see that for the Makeup Forever one, so if that is a concern of yours, the Fenty Beauty might have, you know, a one-up because it is cruelty-free, vegan, and gluten-free. In terms of ingredients, neither of them have fragrance. In terms of application, like I said, both products do claim to be buildable and buildable to full coverage. However, the Makeup Forever one does state that it is full coverage out of the gate, whereas the Fenty one says that it is more medium coverage right out the gate. For fuller coverage, it is suggested to use the black side with strokes like so, um, if you want lighter coverage, it is suggested to use the white side. And then for the Fenty foundation, if you want fuller coverage, which I did show this in the demonstration, go in with the applicator that comes with the product. If you want lighter coverage, then go in with a brush. Let's start off with the Makeup Forever foundation. So I'm gonna first go in with a brush because I more than likely will be using the brush as my main form of application. So I do wanna see what a buffing brush does with applying the foundation on both sides of the face. And then I will go in with the sponge applicators to see the differences and the buildability of the foundation. So this is the Sonia G, the Smooth Buffer Brush. And going in with the Makeup Forever product, Okay, so this is what this side of my face looks like with the Makeup Forever Powder Foundation. I'm just gonna wipe off the brush with my Sonia G Microfiber Towel. Love this towel, by the way. Now we're gonna go in with the Fenty Powder Foundation on this side of the face. Okay, so we've got Fenty on this side of the face and Makeup Forever on this side of the face. And looking at my face from afar, I feel like with the Sonia G Buffer Brush, we're getting a good, nice, I would say, nice medium type of coverage with it. I do feel like I have a little bit more coverage on the Makeup Forever side in comparison to the Fenty side. Um, just slightly more coverage right out the gate. In terms of color, I feel like both of, of them color-wise look about the same. I'm looking at my face from afar and I don't see too much of a difference in terms of color of the powder foundations on my face. Um, you all let me know what you see, but I really like the color of both of the foundations so far. I'm gonna go in with the black side from the Makeup Forever one and taking about this much foundation and I'm gonna see if I can kind of cover up some of this area where I have some dark spots just from like acne scarring and stuff. And yes, I do see buildability there. There, mm-hmm. Let me see if I can get a little bit more of this redness around my nose. Oh yeah. Oh yeah, this is, ooh. This is definitely pulling nice and full coverage. Let's go in with the Fenty sponge and let's see if we can build up the coverage or let's see how well it builds because we know it's buildable. Um, let's go right here. So it's building but not nearly as full coverage as the Makeup Forever in my opinion. Let's try the redness.
yeah so it is building and like i mentioned before in my review of the fenty powder foundation i do think you can get up to full coverage with the fenty powder foundation but i think the makeup forever does pull just right out the gate a little more full coverage than the fenty does i think you'd have to probably add a few more layers of the fenty powder foundation to get that fuller coverage Okay, so I'm gonna come in a little closer so we can see what everything is looking like on my face up close. So this is what both foundations look like on my face. So remember, this is the Makeup Forever Powder Foundation. And then this is the Fenty Beauty Powder Foundation. And like I mentioned before, I think the Makeup Forever side is pulling more full coverage. Um, like I said, straight out the gate than the Fenty side does. I can also see more of a difference in color um, this Makeup Forever foundation is a little deeper in color than the Fenty one is. Um, but I do like the color of the Fenty powder foundation more than the Makeup Forever. The difference is slight, so I like it a little bit more than the Makeup Forever one um, in terms of color. In terms of what they look like on my skin, obviously my, both sides of my face are mattified, but I feel like the Fenty side, although it is matte, it is definitely a softer matte. The Makeup Forever side, I feel like gives me more of, not a heavy matte, but just more of a mattified look. That's a better way to phrase that. Neither side of my face feels heavy. So it's not like this face, this side of my face feels quite powdered down. I just think because the Makeup Forever powder foundation is more full coverage it's going to naturally mattify the face more um, whereas the fenty side i feel like really does show its softer matte coverage in comparison to the fenty side but i do like the smoothness on both sides of my face both sides in my opinion feel very smooth i also think both sides do look really smooth in terms of pores i feel like right here though is it looks a little smoother pore wise than here like on this side of my face i feel like i see a little bit more not texture i just see more of like my skin and it is a little less blurred than the makeup forever side um but all in all i feel like both sides of my face look smooth both sides look blurred um both sides look mattified and in my opinion quite flawless on both sides of the face so I'm gonna finish off my makeup and then I will come back and show you what everything looks like on my face when makeup is done. And then we'll check back in at the end of the day for my final thoughts. So stay tuned. Okay guys, we are back with all of the makeup on my face. I used the Charlotte Tilbury Instant Look in the Palette in the shade Gorgeous Glowing Beauty for my bronzer, blush shades, and highlight. Um, for my lips, I'm wearing the Charlotte Tilbury Pillow Talk Diamonds Glossy Starlit Sparkling Lips Looks. Um, I got this as a freebie when I placed my recent order with Charlotte Tilbury. Um, and I really am liking this lip color. And on my eyes, yesterday I did a review on the two new eyeshadow quads from Charlotte Tilbury. So let me do it like this. <laughs> on this eye, I'm wearing the Star Aura Pack quad and then on this eye I'm wearing the Diva Lights quad and I'll link that video for you if you'd like to go and watch it. So we have had both of these foundations on for a couple of hours and I am liking the way that my face is looking. I think both sides look really smooth and flawless. Just flawless. I don't see any real standouts from either side of from either foundation. I'm looking at my face from afar. Um, Looking at it up close, there's no settling of the foundation on this side of my face, which is where we have the Fenty foundation. And this is my bigger smile line. And typically if I do have foundation to settle there, it will settle on this one and not usually in the fine lines on this side. So can't really do a comparison of like which foundation would settle um, because I don't see settling on either side of the face. All in all, I just think both sides are just pretty flawless at this point. So um, like I said, I've been wearing both foundations for about two hours now. So I'm gonna go about my day and then I'll check back in later on at the end of the day and we'll see how both sides are holding up. But so far, 
so good okay guys it is the end of the day i've had these foundations on for nine hours so remember we have the makeup forever matte velvet foundation on this side of the face and then the fenty powder foundation on this side of the face and looking at my face uh, you know, we automatically notice the dewiness and my oils breaking through around my nose, which this is what I looked like after I wore the Fenty Beauty Foundation for I think it was eight hours. So we're seeing that same dewiness around my nose. Like I mentioned before, my oils are going to always break through around my nose first, but everywhere else looks really, really nice. I'll come in a little closer so you can see my face up close. So, like I said, this is the Makeup Forever Soft Matte Foundation on this side, and then the Fenty Beauty Foundation on this side. In terms of everywhere else, I feel like everywhere else around my face looks really good. I mean, really nice and flawless. So I'm going to blot taking my Wayne Goss airbrush brush and just blotting around my nose. And guys, we are ready to take this foundation on for another good like five or so <laughs> hours of wear. I really don't know which side looks better. I think if I had to choose, cause I'm looking at my mirror from afar, looking at my face up close, and looking at my face from afar, I think the Makeup Forever side just looks a tad more flawless around this area of my face compared to this area of my face. And that's the only difference that I can see um, with both of the powder foundations. I feel like both sides of my face look really smooth and flawless. I feel like both sides of my face do not look overly dry like yes my face is a little more mattified than you know my normal dewy looks but my face i don't feel like either side of my face looks dry and parched and like it needs some hydration i think earlier on like freshly applied the makeup forever side did look more full coverage than the fenty beauty side and I still would agree to that. And I think that's why I feel like this area of my face looks maybe a little more flawless because it just is, it has more coverage to this side versus this side. I don't feel like the Fenty side looks less flawless because it's less blurred. I think it's because it's less coverage here because the foundation in and of itself is a little more lighter in coverage than the Makeup for Everyone just coming out the gate. So I feel like if I wanted to build up the Fenty side, I could and achieve the same flawlessness, but I didn't want to over apply the powder foundation on either side of my face. And so I think depending on what you're looking for in a powder foundation, if you want something to have more coverage right out of the gate, then I would recommend the Makeup Forever side. If you're someone who is like me, who likes, you know, nice medium type of coverage. You don't want anything too full coverage all the time, but you want the option of maybe getting fuller coverage when you want it. I think the Fenty Beauty Powder would be a really good match for that category of people. But in all honesty, I am happy I have both because if I want that fuller coverage, just like that, and I also want a more flawless effect, I'm reaching for this Makeup Forever Powder Foundation. And I also feel like with the Fenty Beauty Foundation, I would wear this foundation on days when I want like a quick makeup look um, that's gonna look flawless, but I don't have to do as many steps. Um, two, I would also add the Fenty, this Fenty Beauty Powder Foundation on top of a liquid foundation to give me fuller coverage. Um, because I feel like it's light enough to where I don't feel like I would look cakey. Haven't tried it yet, so I have to confirm that. But I feel like I won't look cakey with applying a liquid foundation and then topping it with this powder foundation. But I am highly impressed by both because I really felt like going into this, there was going to be like a surefire winner and that one was going to outperform the other. I wasn't sure how, but I thought it was going to be like really obvious. And in my opinion, it's not that obvious. I don't think you can go wrong with either foundation. I think it really does come down to 
do you really want fuller coverage right out of the gate? And if your answer is yes, make a forever side. However, there are 20 more shades on the Fenty side as well. So in terms of shade match, you might be able to find a better shade selection on the Fenty Beauty side compared to the Makeup Forever side. It's not like 30 shades, it's horrible. <laughs> it's not bad at all, but you do have 20 more shades on the Fenty Beauty side. So I really think, you know, based on shade, based on coverage, you're not gonna go wrong with either foundation. I recommend both of them. I'm just highly impressed. Like both of these foundations are making me rethink my whole glowy life. I don't think I'm gonna give up the glowy life because <laughs> I'm quite married to it. <laughs> but I'm just like, whoa, don't be shocked if I'm a little mattified these days. Just don't be shocked. I can't wait to apply these foundations with my Lila Be A Glow Face Mist. Oh, my Lila Be Prime, you know, oh, I'm getting so excited. I think it's just gonna look just even more flawless with having like those glowy products on top. But yes, I hope that you found this review helpful. I hope, you know, cause some of you all did ask which one do you like better? And I, oh, I don't know which one I like better. I honestly cannot choose because like I said, I feel like the Makeup Forever one does look more flawless because it is fuller coverage. So to me, there's a, for me and like my makeup style, there's a time and a place for a fuller coverage. And then there's also a time and a place for a lighter coverage. So I like both of them and I would wear both of them based on the type of coverage I want. So if I want fuller coverage, I'm going Makeup Forever. If I want lighter coverage, I'm going to go Fenty Beauty. So that's where I'm at with it. I really like both. And I, I'm just, oh, I cannot get over it. I really cannot get over how both of them look. I hope that this video was helpful to you. And if there are any questions that I did not answer in this video, please leave them down below so that I can provide the answer for you. And guys, that is it. Thank you so much for watching. And I really hope to see you in my very next video. Bye guys.